In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. It's wonderful to be back in the pulpit at Redeemer. I wish to thank Father Wilson for the invitation to preach and celebrate on this important day. A teacher asked her Sunday school class, if I sold my house and my car and had a garage sale and sold all my stuff and gave everything, all the money that I, that I had to the church, would that guarantee that I would get into heaven? And the children said, no. Well, then she went on. She said, well, if I cleaned the church every day and made everything neat and tidy, mowed the yard, would that get me into heaven? And the kids said, no. Well, she said, well, then how do I, how do I go to heaven? And a little five-year-old boy in the back of the classroom shouted out, you got to be dead. <laughs> Do you think the young man was right? Do you have to be dead to get into heaven? Heaven is God's abode, right? So if heaven is where God is, then anywhere God is, there's heaven. In other words, it's not so much a location as it is a state of being. God is everywhere, isn't he? So in a sense, heaven is everywhere. When our Lord Jesus began his ministry, his earthly ministry, he said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Without saying it explicitly, he was uttering in that simple sentence that you've been looking for the Messiah. I'm the Messiah. I'm the Lord's anointed. Wherever I am, there's heaven. There is the kingdom of heaven. We're in this beautiful season of Easter. And tonight we're, we're celebrating the sacrament that our Lord Jesus gave to us. We remember his teaching that whenever two or three are gathered together in his name, he will be in the midst of them. We know that as we celebrate the Holy Eucharist, as we consume his body, we literally, literally bring the presence of Christ into our own bodies. And so in a very real way, whenever we gather together to worship, we experience a little bit of heaven. In other words, we're in heaven right now. To a degree. Now I say to a degree because God doesn't require us to focus on him. He doesn't require us to center our lives on him. It's possible that you're here physically, but that you're not focused upon God at all. It's possible, not probable, but possible. Maybe you're think of, thinking about what you're going to have for dinner when you leave here. Or maybe you're focused on how badly you've been treated by so-and-so and how you're going to get back at that person. You're plotting your revenge. Is that inconceivable? When we focus on ourselves, 
with God somewhere on the periphery, if anywhere, then we're choosing not to be in heaven. Or maybe you're focused on God to the very best of your ability, by the grace of God. And when we focus on God, allowing him to be the center of our lives, then we're choosing to be in heaven. I said to a degree also, because in our sinful condition, we can only imperfectly focus on God. There's always something of the selfishness of of our lives in everything we do, I think. And so you can only imperfectly focus on God. I think that's what St. Paul meant when he said, for now we see in a mirror dimly. We're in this wonderful season of Easter when we celebrate the event that opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers, the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. That event changed all of human history, reconciling God with his people. We became participants in that event through our baptism. Through Jesus' death on the cross, our access to God the Father is always available to us. Now today, the 40th day of Easter, we celebrate another aspect of that event, the ascension of Jesus into heaven. That means that Jesus took our human flesh with him into the Godhead. Think about that. That is, it was that human flesh that was resurrected and the resurrected body of Jesus was was somewhat different from the pre-resurrected body of Jesus, wasn't it? For instance, Jesus could pass through the solid door and appear in the upper room with his disciples at will. And yet Thomas could put his finger in the wounds in his hands and his hand in his side. Jesus could be recognized or not as he chose. That's what his resurrected body was like. His body required no nourishment, but he could eat. That's what his resurrected body was like. It's that body that he took with him up into heaven. When we say in the creeds that we believe in the resurrection of the body, it's that kind of resurrected body that we can look forward to. The Christian doctrine of resurrection teaches that while body and soul may appear to be temporarily separated at death, the body and soul are eternal and inseparable. We speak of the resurrection of only the body because while the body dies, the soul is immortal. At some point after death, the body is resurrected as an immortal and incorruptible body and is reunited with the immortal soul which did not die with the body. That's what the Christian faith is. The whole person, both body and soul, inseparably united is what Christ saved by his death and resurrection. So when we do die and our immortal soul goes to heaven, ultimately, we can look forward to a resurrected body as well. Of course, Jesus is also fully divine as well as fully human. 
So his ascension into heaven means that he can, through the Holy Spirit, be anywhere and everywhere at will. The collect for this day states that he has ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Last Monday, I visited one of our parishioners in the hospital. I anointed him with oil for healing. I gave him the sacrament of Holy Communion from the reserved sacrament. The two of us were there in the room, but three of us were there in the room because Jesus was there. In prayer, I asked our Lord Jesus to continue to be with, with this person, to sustain him with, with his presence. And when we both received Holy Communion, thereby bringing the actual physical, tangible presence of Jesus into our lives, that was another aspect of Jesus' presence. Now, over the years, I've done that countless times. And so have all of the other clergy in this parish. And you know what? Jesus has always been there. And he doesn't just show up in hospital rooms with clergy. There was a Bible study, at least one, maybe two, yesterday morning in this parish, and he was there too. He's present at every Mass, not only in this parish, but in every parish around the world. He's present in every class held in these walls. He's even present at EYC. <laughs> He's present in all of our homes as long as we welcome him. And guess what? He shows up at First Methodist Church too. <laughs> and First Baptist, and St. Martha's Roman Catholic Church. He's, he shows up at all of those places. He's present throughout this city, throughout this country, and all over the world. Furthermore, he has done it for centuries. He's responsible for the building of schools and universities, hospitals, orphanages, homeless shelters, and of course, great cathedrals and little country parish churches. He's able to fill all things because he ascended into heaven. So when we say he ascended into heaven, we mean all of these things. John Keeble, who is who lived in the 19th century and is memorialized in one of the windows in the priest's sacristy, which is right behind the altar, the high altar, wrote a wonderful book called The Christian Year, and in it he has a hymn that he wrote for each day of the, each Sunday of the year and each major holy day. Well, on Ascension Day, he, he wrote this hymn, and I'm going to read just a few of the of the stanzas. The sun and every vassal star, all space beyond the soar of angels' wings, wait on his word, and yet he stays his car for every sigh a contrite suppliant brings. He listens to the silent tear. For all the anthems of the boundless sky, and shall our dreams of music bar our ear to his soul-piercing voice forever nigh. Nay, gracious Savior, but as now our thoughts have traced thee to thy glory throne, so help us evermore with thee to bow where human sorrow 
breathes her lowly moan. And so this great event that we celebrate today, the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ into heaven, leads us back to breaking the fixation that we have with ourselves and focusing upon God and on the needs of others. And in the process, we will find ourselves in his very presence, indeed, in heaven itself.